Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head to Greece once again and we're going to have a look at another brewery that I've never tried anything from, so I'm very curious to see how it turns out. For this review then, we are going to go to Nobleman Craft Beer and we're having a taste of the Holy Strength, which is their take on a Belgian style triple. This one comes in at 11% ABV, so a little bit high in alcohol for this style, but I'm sure it will be really quite nice actually. As far as I no, as of October 2019, this is the only example of a Belgian triple that you can find that's brewed in Greece. If you are watching from Greece, of course, though, and there is another one, do let me know that I've lied to you in the uh, in the description below. But very curious to see how this one turns out. A big thank you to my friend Yorgos once again for making this review possible. I'm just hoping that this beer doesn't explode like the last one that he gave me. That That's always the risk, actually, when it comes to Belgian-style beers. But looking forward to it, and again, I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Nobleman Craft Beer. Very first time I'm trying one of their beers. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefetch or whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the greek beers that i've reviewed for you that's being added to whenever i get the opportunity and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about nobleman craft beer then on to my brewery notes so nobleman are a gypsy nomad brewery however you want to term them and they're based in Greece, obviously, and they were found by Alexandros Kanelis in the summer of 2017. So still fairly new on the block, actually. But he said that he basically got into beer because he wanted to change the way it was thought about in Greece. Greece, of course, is mainly a wine country, and they do some awesome wines, actually. I got to taste a few of those when I was there. But it always tends to be the case that wine countries tend to be good when it comes to making craft beer and I think Greece is not an exception to that rule. Some of the craft beer you'll find in Greece is very very good but they also wanted to basically bring styles to Greece that weren't so common and like I said as far as I know this is the only example of a Belgian tripel that is brewed in Greece so Again, let me know about that if I'm not correct in the in the comment section below. But Alex basically deals with the business side of the company and he's joined by Natasa Bletsa who deals with the management side of it. The beers themselves are brewed at the Elixis Brewery which is in Chalkida to the north of Athens. I think it might be an hour or two to drive there from Athens because Greece is quite a deceptively big country. I learned that when I was there. It looks a lot smaller on the map than it actually is. Um, but they brew the beers at the Alexis Brewery using their own recipes. They've got a consultant that helps them kind of build these recipes as well and they also consult with the Alexis Brewer as well. They do apparently hope to open their own brewery in the future at some point though and that'll involve hiring their own brewer and stuff like that too. But the artwork on these beers was designed by Alex's old classmate Christos Capelis and it's based on Philip Marlowe from Raymond Chandler's police novel um, Goodbye My Sweetie. Um, so they did say that they, they wanted the, the beer to just be really kind of the, the branding to be quite eye catching and stuff like that and you can't really say that it's not but as of October 2019 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have produced five different kinds of beer and uh, I've heard that this one is one of the best ones that they do so yeah that was all the information I was really able to find out about Nobleman Craft Beer there wasn't really very much available in newspapers and stuff about these guys I think it was actually um Basically what I found, I found this sort of PDF thing that came on and it was a food magazine and there was an article in there about these guys so I had to go through it and basically Google Translate it all and transcribe it. It was quite difficult to find information on this brewery and that was all that I was able to find. But yeah, if you want to learn more about this brewery you can check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to see what's going on and uh, the Rate Beer and Untapped pages will tell you a lot about the different beers that these guys have done. Apparently the next beer they want to do is a Weizen. So it'd be interesting to see how that turns out actually. But um, yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. So as you can see, nice artwork on this one. I think it's quite... Um it's almost a little bit like emo metalish, to be honest with you. That was my first thought when I saw it. There you can see on the back of the bottle there, that is the Nobleman craft beer symbol. 
which is really interesting. There you can see some stuff in uh, in Greek. I'm not going to try and read that. You know, I actually, because of my background in physics and chemistry, I, I actually, if I was to learn Greek, I think I would learn the the how to read it very quickly, just because all the symbols and things like that, like you know, pi is uh, pi is p and theta is t and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, there you can see. The bottle cap as well is quite unique. I'll definitely be adding that one to my collection. But um, yeah, I always wind up my friend Yorgos that his language. I don't know how he can handle having so much maths in his life. But um, yeah, it's it's nice this one. I think I've told you a lie actually at the start of the video. I just noticed it says on the bottle here that this one is nine point five percent. But it said on the website and on Untapped and things that this beer was eleven percent. So maybe this one is a is a slightly aged version or something like that. But Yorgos gave me it very recently so I wouldn't have thought that but um, yeah without further ado then let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then so this one is a 9.5% um, noble uh, crap like triple beer from nobleman craft beer a gypsy brewery oh there we go oh no it's fine it's fine it didn't explode good beer I just saw the bubbles coming up and I was I was getting excited there but um, yeah let's get this guy out then and we'll get on to the tasting I'm really curious to see how this turns out. Like I say, not often that you will find an example of a Greek triple. There you go, look at that. Carbonation really active in this one, so quite obviously a bottle conditioned beer. And the sediment, it really seems to have, um, you know, it really seems to have kind of mixed in with the rest of it so it's coming out quite nice and hazy you could see there was a good half finger of a frothy kind of slightly creamy ivory colored head there but that's just faded away and that's something that will happen when it comes to um you know when it comes to to high alcohol beers like that although the belgian beers in fairness usually do um retain their head i think it can be due to do with having a little bit of wheat malt in the beer as well but maybe this one says it's best before the second of 2020 so maybe it's just because it's getting towards the end of its kind of recommended date. So when I hold this beer up to the light, it's actually quite a rich, um, orangey amber colour, this one. I mean, usually you expect these beers to be very blonde and things like that. So that's one of the things to, uh, to remember. This this is a little bit darker in terms of its colour, actually. So, yeah, um, if I put my fingers behind the glass too, you can see it is quite hazy. It just really depends on which um, beer, which exact triple it is that you go for how bright the yellowness is going to be and all this kind of thing but one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of where that head would have been so you can see it's just faded away to be a very light thin kind of foamy layer there actually so yeah let's take a closer look at the aroma with this one and just see how we get on curious to see how this beer turns out oh that smells quite interesting actually so straight away with this beer it comes across as um, having a nice bit of that doughy, yeasty quality that you would expect. There's a good bit of um, a biscuity note coming out of this one too, which is very interesting. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely, it's got that big white bready, doughy, yeasty kind of thing. There is a little bit of that almost clovey spice to this one, which is interesting. Um, the doughy, yeasty notes and the white bready qualities are... Um, are quite nice in this one I have to say. I like how that all goes together. There is a little bit of a kind of candied brown sugar and it almost gives the impression of being a little bit sort of banana-y to be honest in the aroma too. But um, that's nice how that goes together actually. I really quite like the, the malty base in this one. The fruity notes in this are very interesting. You've got a little bit of a kind of sultana, like a dried peachy apricot kind of thing as well, but there's almost a little bit of like a, a green grapey note, to be honest. Um, it's a little bit like what you would get from Nelson Sovine hops. Um, there's a lot going on in this one. On the hoppy side of things, right enough, you can pick up a little bit of grassiness, um, not really any floral character, maybe a teensy, teensy little bit of earthiness. But really, the green side of the hops in this beer, they lean towards the, um, they really lean towards that grassy side of things. So yeah, um, in terms of its aroma, this is really interesting. Some lovely fruity notes like apricots, um, maybe uh, not papaya. I don't think so. A little bit apricot, a little bit sultana, and a little bit of a kind of green grapey note. Perhaps some apple and pear esters out of this one too. But nice big doughy bready note. A little bit of a kind of. Um, biscuity quality to this one as well um, and it's 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 really nice that how it all goes together um, 
I really like that. It's almost got a little bit of a kind of Werther's original type um, candy brown sugar note to it as well. Because quite often with these tripels, they will add a little bit of candy sugar to them. And um, it gives the Belgian beers always feel a little bit warmer down here in terms of alcohol. So that's another interesting point to actually... Um, to make about this beer so just just bear that in mind actually that's always nice how that goes together but yeah take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this beer before you get stuck into it but we're going to have a taste of this now and just uh, and see how we go and I think this one will be really interesting so this one is the Holy Strength and Abbey Style Tripel coming in at 9.5% again my apologies for lying to you at the start of the video and telling you it was 11% but this one comes to you from Nobleman Craft Beer a gypsy brewery um, based just to the north of Athens in Greece Let's get stuck in. Slange, Skull, Yamas. Thank you to Yorgos once again. That's pretty nice actually. Um, it's quite different in terms of its um, in terms of it being a tripel, if you like. It's actually quite um, it's is a little bit more kind of bready in things. Um, it's got a really thick, yeasty quality to it, and the fruity notes are a little bit different as well. It's, that's an interesting one, this. It's, it's, um, in some ways, it's very similar to what you'd get from the likes of um, Vesmala and things like that, and um, in other ways, it's quite different, actually. It's uh, the Rocky Four Nine, if I'm remembering correctly. It's kind of a little bit like that as well. Um, yeah, that, this is an interesting one, actually. If you get the chance to try this, <coughs> pardon me, and you uh, and you you know you like this style, have a go at it. It's not often you'll get to try a Greek tripel. And yeah, that is one thing I'll say about this. When you take it in the first time, this is one that you definitely need to let your palate adjust to to fully appreciate what's going on here. Um, I really I do like how that's going together though. It gets a thumbs up from me this one. Um. It's interesting too because the mouth feels a little bit different and this is one of the things that you often find when you get beer styles like this and um, that come from different countries and it seems to be more the case with the German with a uh, German style and Belgian style beers that are brewed in other countries rather than IPAs and things like that the mouth feels always tend to be a little bit different but you've got a lot of the kind of typical characteristics actually so I like how that goes together. Yeah, this is interesting. Um, so yeah, let's try and break this flavour down a little bit then. Straight away with this beer, you're going to feel that nice, um, kind of thick, doughy, yeasty quality, that bread, you know, just blanket in the middle of your tongue. The further you go into the aftertaste, that doughy quality is going to kind of thicken up and it gets a little bit sweeter and it starts to lean more towards that um, kind of, it starts to get a little bit more kind of like clovey and banana -y. you'll notice that in the middle of your palate. If you go to the very centre of your tongue, it's got a little bit of a um, biscuity sweetness there as well and you can pick up some of those kind of candied sugars too and that will be coming out in the form of uh, the bananas I would think. But yeah, it's quite... Um, it really is quite um, almost like medicinally and cough syrupy, this one. And usually we talk about phenols coming out in, um, you know, in quadrupels and broom beers rather than, um, rather than tripels and stuff like that. But this one really does have a sort of medicinally quality to it as well, which is quite interesting. Um, so yeah, make sure, like, pay attention to that. If you move further forward on the palette, you will get that a little bit. Um, there might be a little hint of a, a woody undertone to this one. Like, you've seen how long it was since I took a sip of this beer. There is a little touch of a kind of woodiness. If you go to the front corners of your palette and move in, it's a little bit woody. Um, no real nutty notes or anything like that, but you wouldn't expect that from this beer. Sometimes you can get a little bit of a, a woody quality in there. But, I mean... It's quite thick, it's quite doughy. There's not really a big kind of wheaty, white bready presence to this. You can get that from some tripels, right enough. Um, but this one is it's leading towards that kind of clovey, spicy type quality, to be honest, which is interesting. But yeah, the fruity side of this beer is nice as well. But let's focus on the hops for the moment. Back corners of the palate, you will get a tiny little bit of earthiness there. It's, it's, it's quite minimal, that. But as you come further forward along the sides of the tongue, you can feel that just spreading forward. You might get a little hint of a floral quality on the front corners of the palate. And as you go round the very front curve of the tongue, it's a little bit lighter. 
and more grassy. One of the things you have to note about these um, tripels though is quite sometimes they don't even add hops to the beer. It's usually just almost like a, a kind of paradox. You you pick up those flavours because you're kind of expecting them to be there. But I would say in terms, and that might be the case with the earthiness in this one, but I would say the grassiness is most definitely there actually. So, yeah, just pay attention to how that um, how that goes together. But yeah, the the interesting part of this beer is just how the the fruits go together. So, as I always say, the fruity part of the beer comes out. Those fruity esters just roll out your tongue in that little oily bubble that you'll find behind the front curve of your tongue there. And for me, this is this is quite interesting. You go to the very back of that, you get an almost like fruit cakey type quality to this one, and that's where you're getting these almost medicinal type qualities out of the beer that I was talking about. It's it's really interesting in that sense. But then, as you move um, further forward on the tongue, you'll start to get like an apricotty um, type note out of this one. It maybe even has a little tiny peachy note, a little bit of that sharper quality there. But then there's some dry sultanas in there, and then on the very front of the, the tongue, you're starting to get the apple and peri esters. Maybe even a little bit of that white grapey gooseberry note that I was talking about earlier. So yeah, I mean this beer. It has things that you would really expect from this tripel. I think it's a little bit more kind of clovey, spicy than some of the other ones that I've had. And that some of the fruits that you get out of this are a little bit different, like the goose, the slightly gooseberry notes. Um, but overall, it's quite. Um, and I guess the other thing to mention is the medicinal quality that it has. But overall, it's it's quite a nice beer, this one. So thumbs up from me. It's it's quite different to the Belgian ones. Just be aware of that if you're expecting something similar to the likes of um, Vestmale and stuff like this, it is a little bit different so just bear that in mind but it's a nice example of the style and it's cool that a Greek brewery is trying this sort of thing as well obviously so yeah it's quite boozy as well though you can really feel that with this beer let's talk about the mouthfeel then so I would say that this beer is it's definitely full bodied, it's at the bottom end of full bodied. Carbonation does give it a little bit of crispness and in fairness with Belgian style beers you do expect that there usually is a, good, a little bit of crispness to the mouthfeel and that's what makes them you know fairly drinkable to be honest because they are big boozy beasts normally um, but a good little bit of crispness to this one. I would say that overall there's a, a level of crispness in there um, a level of smoothness and um, you've got a good balance between uh, in the malt base you've got a good balance between a sort of smooth bready quality, a little bit of um, biscuity sweetness too and then you've got, um, you do have a little bit of biscuity sweetness in the middle of the palate but this is more a smooth, okay, a kind of smooth beer in terms of how the, the middle of your palate goes together. Um, in terms of hoppiness you have a little bit of a you do have, got to have a little bit of IBUs. I'd be surprised though if this beer's over anything over like 15 IBUs to be honest with you. And you've got some nice juicy fruity qualities there. It's a little bit medicinal and cakey as well like I was saying. A little bit, I don't know if it is right to call that phenolic. Because again that's a term you would normally associate with quadrupels and, uh, and uh, broom beers rather than the, the blondes or indeed the tripels. But um, overall, it's it's just an interesting beer, this one. The fruitiness starts off be, is quite sharp, but then it really smooths out and becomes a little bit more oily. So really quite interesting in that regard. So um, yeah, um, an interesting beer, this one. Slightly different to what you'd expect from a Belgian tripel, but definitely cool to see this style being tried somewhere like Greece. Um, I would say this beer is definitely a sipper rather than um, a kind of big heavy thing. But I can see why the Greeks would like this. You know, they're they're very into their wine and stuff. The quality of their wine is very good, so they might treat this beer um, in a somewhat kind of similar manner, if you like. But a really interesting beer, this one, and cool to review a Greek take on uh, the Belgian tripel style. So thumbs up to Nobleman Beer for this one. Hopefully, I can review one or two of their other beers at some point in the future. It would definitely cool to kind of pop that cherry and try another Greek brewery that I hadn't in encountered before. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. A big thank you to Yorgios for making this one possible. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from uh, from this brewery as well. Let me know any other Greek breweries that I should be checking out and I'll see if I can get um, Yorgos to get a hold of them for me on his next trip up here. But overall, a really, really interesting beer, this one. Um, let me know your own thoughts on it in the comment section below and make sure you check out my social media. And I'll catch you guys very soon. The Holy Strength, a triple coming in at 9.5% ABV 
from Nobleman Brewery, a gypsy brewery based in uh, Chalkeda at the Bruder Beers at the Elixir Brewery to the north of Athens. Um, but yeah, really cool to review this one. And uh, I'll catch you guys very soon. Yamas! Thank you again for watching. And uh, Slanger just now. Slanger, Scott, Yamas. Make sure you check out some of these beers from Nobleman Craft Beer. Cheers.